Thank you. Here's what we're doing in our video today. We will sing and move to Warrior Cry. We will sing solfege and match pitch as we do so. We will discover the music of a string quartet and then asynchronously on your own, I'll set you loose to listen to and analyze the music of a string quartet. So we'll start with Warrior Cry. So everybody find your space and stand up, spread out. Make sure you got plenty of room to move. We're going to do it three times. First time we do it andante, walking speed. Then we'll do it allegro, skipping speed. Then we'll finish up with presto, running speed. Punk, ale, ale. All right, so I'm going to figure out, feel the beat with my feet. So first we're starting. Ready, here we go. Hook, ale, ale, hook, ale, ale, tiki, tiki, tom, tom, tiki, tiki, tom, tom. Bushka, 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 bushka. Adi, 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 adi. And we're going to go Allegro, which is skipping speed. Hook, alea, hook, alea, here we go. Hook, alea, alea, hook, alea, alea. Tiki, tiki, tom, tom, tiki, tiki, tom, tom. Bushka, 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 bushka. Adi, 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 Get us some more presto, presto, fast. Hook, alea, alea, hook, alea, alea, ready. All right, it's always good to start with some movement because so much of what you do and bring to the table, the music comes from getting your body involved. All right, we're going to move on to singing some solfege. So just a quick reminder, solfege is using do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do in some kind of pattern, um, and your goal is to match pitch, which means your voice sounds the same as mine. If I'm singing do, you're singing do. If I'm singing t, you're singing t. Uh, your voice sings the same note as mine. Okay, so I'm going to sing a pattern. You're going to copy me. My turn. Do, re, mi. Your turn. Do, re, mi. My turn. Mi fa so, your turn. Mi fa so, my turn. So fa mi, your turn. So fa mi, my turn. Mi re do, your turn. Mi re do, my turn. Do mi so, your turn. Do mi so, my turn. So fa so your turn. So fa so my turn. So la ti your turn. So la ti my turn. Ti ti do your turn. Ti ti do my turn. Do ti la la your turn. Do ti la la my turn. So, so, fa, so, so, fa, my turn, mi, re, do, your turn, mi, re, do, my turn, do, 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 your turn, do, 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 my hand did not do what my voice sang at one point. All right, we will keep working on singing solfege, uh, matching pitch, a great way for you to practice matching pitch at home is just on your own. So you're listening to Spotify, so you're listening to songs on TikTok. If you know you're doing TikTok dances, like I was doing a second grade a little bit today, um, just sing along and just notice, are you matching pitch? Are you singing the same as that vocalist is singing? All right, today we're gonna start talking about 
<clears throat> string quartets. I'm gonna make myself teeny tiny for this one for a little bit. Um, and I'm just gonna start by telling you a little bit about string quartets and then we'll break it down little by little and, and uh, learn some more of the nitty gritty stuff. Okay, so here we go. Uh, string quartet is a musical ensemble. Ensemble just means a group of people that perform together. Made up of four players. There's two violins, one viola, and one cello. Now, I usually cover the string family with elementary academy scholars, but I didn't have you last year. So I'm not sure whether or not um, you have studied that in the past. So that's a little bit of what we're going to do today is talk about those instruments. String quartets were first developed by a guy named Franz Joseph Haydn, who was a composer in the 1700s. Uh, a composer is someone who writes music. So just like an author writes a book, a composer writes music. Um, composing for a string quartet was a mark of a gifted composer. And what that means is that there's so many different kinds of music out there. And maybe this one composer guy, there were mostly men back then, one composer's guy, I like, I really want to show off. I really want to show these people what I can do. I'm going to write music for a string quartet because that'll make me look real fancy. And they're going to think, wow, that guy's pretty great. Um, so yeah, it, most of the pe pieces that are written by composers that are for a string quartet, um, are just like, wow. Yeah. Joseph Haydn. Yeah. He was great. Franz Joseph Haydn. Um, I know Bach wrote some, I know Mozart wrote some, I know Beethoven wrote some, all those famous composer guys that maybe you've heard of, um, wrote for a string quartet. This is an example of something called chamber music. Chamber music is music that was written to be played in a chamber, which just means in a small room. So it was string quartets were not usually performed in a big concert hall. Uh, they were performed maybe in someone's living room, even. Um, usually uh, someone who's very rich could afford to hire a string quartet and have them play in the room. Um, but yeah, it just means music that would be played in a smaller room. Uh, each of the music musicians uses a bow to make the strings on their instrument vibrate. So I put a picture of a bow um, because all four of the instruments we're about to talk about will have that as part of it. Um, but rather than gunk up the next pages with pictures of bows, there's one. The white stuff on the bottom of the bow is made, is hair from a horse's tail. And it's a whole bunch of little strands of horse's hair all kind of clumped together to make something that's long and very flat. And you pull that um, hair part across the strings and that's what vibrates the string and makes the sound. String players put sticky stuff called rosin on the bow hair. Um, cause if, you know, if you feel hair, it can be a lot smoother and, um, you know, if you brush your hair out a little bit, you can run your hand over it and it's like, yeah, that's pretty smooth, but that doesn't catch on anything. So they put stuff called rosin on it cause that makes it sticky. Imagine like if you get like gum stuck in your hair and then you try to run your fingers through your hair, it ain't going to happen. Uh, so kind of the same thing. It makes it feel sticky and that sticks to the string of the violin, the viola or the cello and that makes it vibrate a little bit more strongly. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear it. All right, so there's a picture of bow. Yeah, there's horse hair on the bottom. It's made out of wood. And all of the three instruments we'll talk about today use a bow, um, at least I'll say most of the time, not always, but most of the time. All right, so now we're gonna go through the four instruments in a string quartet. quartet. Uh, the first is the violin, which is probably the most popular, the most well-known. It is the smallest member of the string family as far as, you know, popular instruments in the string family. Um, and it is the highest pitch, and that's kind of a rule in music that I'd like us to just get into our brain. The smaller the instrument, the higher the pitch. The bigger the instrument, the lower the pitch. So, um, yeah, the violin is the highest sounding, and it is the smallest member of the string family. There are two violins in a string quartet, two violins in a string quartet, but each violin plays a different part. Sometimes they play the exact same thing, but most of the time there'll be one violin, maybe called first violin, and then another called second violin. First violin usually plays something that's higher, not always, higher, or sometimes maybe more challenging. And then the second violin usually plays the harmony, lower part, um, that maybe is not as challenging. Usually, not always, uh, the first violinist would have like a solo if there was a solo between the two. Okay, so notice the shape 
of the violin, because that's going to come back a whole bunch. Um, starting at the very top, you have the scroll and the head of the violin. Those four thingies sticking out from the side, those are the tuning pegs. That's how you adjust the sound of the strings to make them all sound right. Then you have the body of the violin. That's kind of shaped like, you know, like a hourglass or like the number eight. Got four strings on a violin. There's two little F holes, they're called. Um, kind of curvy little holes in the instrument that makes the sound come out. And then the instrument attaches down at the bottom at that piece called the bridge. Kind of almost, almost a triangle. And then there's a picture of it from the side as well. When you play the violin, you rest it here uh, on your shoulder, between your shoulder and your chin, between your collarbone kind of and your chin, um, and you play it like that. Okay, so that is the violin, the first uh, instrument in a string quartet. Next is the viola. Oh my gosh, it looks almost exactly the same. It is slightly, slightly larger than the violin. And it is slightly lower in pitch because we said that the higher the instrument, the smaller it will be. The lower the instrument, the bigger it will be. So violin is slightly bigger, so it is also slightly lower. Uh, though the viola is slightly bigger than the violin, it's still small enough to tuck up under your chin. You play it in the exact same way. It still has the scroll and the tuning pegs and the four strings. And the same shape body, um, really, in, unless they're right next to each other, you might not be able to tell the difference between a viola and a violin. They look a lot alike. Um, I have only known, in all my years, one viola player um, that played like with my school's orchestra when I was in college. Um, so they're a cool instrument. I like them. They usually have some kind of harmony, and they can uh, make some really cool low sounds. All right, and then the last one here is the cello. It is the same shape as a violin and a viola. Just looks a little bit different. It is too big to hold underneath your chin. So uh, you aren't having it up here because your arm would not reach the head or the tuning pegs if you had to. The player must rest it on the floor on an end pin. So if you look at the very bottom of those two pictures of the cello, one from the front, from the, one from the side, there's a long silver stick that points down with a little black rubber stopper on the end. That's called the end pin. And that you can adjust to make it sit up higher or down lower um, so that you can play at a comfortable place. And then that rubber piece at the bottom keeps it from sliding around on slippery floors. So um, it, though it is bigger, than the violin and viola, it is smaller than another string instrument, the double bass. There is no double bass in a string quartet. Typically you see them in orchestras, but not as often. So because the cello is the lowest instrument in the string quartet, it provides the bass sound, the low sound. Um, and there's some really cool cello pieces. One of my dearest friends is a cello player. Um, a very, one of, I would say the most famous string players in popular music is a guy named Yo-Yo Ma, and he is a cello player. Maybe you've heard of him before. Okay, so those are the four instruments of a string quartet. I just grabbed a couple more pictures that show what these instruments look like. Uh, the first picture I put here, the four ladies, um, because I wanted you to see the size of them compared to each other. So the two furthest to the right are both holding violins. And then the second lady from the left here She's holding a viola, so notice that they're not, it's not a huge difference in size. And then the one closest to me here is holding the cello. Okay, so going from left to right, we got cello, viola, violin, violin. Cello, viola, violin, violin. In the other picture with the blue curtain in the background, I put that one so you can just see how they're all holding it. You can see that they have for the violins and viola, they have it tucked up underneath their chin. They all have bows in their hand. And that uh, cello player is sitting down and it's resting on the floor. Um, another important thing in, in string quartets that, that happens is you always have the two violin players sitting next to each other so that they can hear each other really well. And then the viola and the cello player sit next to each other because they usually play the harmony and play down a little bit lower. Um, usually the first violinist, so in that blue picture, the one furthest to the left, um, the guy who you can see his head, <laughs> he doesn't have a lot of hair on his head. Um, he's usually the one who cues the rest of the players. It's like, we're starting now. And he does that with movements in his body to tell the string quartet players when to play. Because usually a string quartet, play, uh, string quartet will not have a conductor. No one 
waving their arms around, keep the beat and telling them when to play. They have to listen to each other and feel the music flowing through them to know when to start and stop. Okay, so that's a little bit about a string quartet. Um, I'm watching very closely the time on my video. I'm just over 15 minutes right now. So what I thought we could do is rather than listen to something by Franz Joseph Haydn say, um, I found some examples of string quartets that are popular, uh, popular music, music you might hear on the radio. Um, I, I know I heard one from the movie Greatest Showman. I know I saw Havana on my list. So I'm going to pick like maybe three different uh, string quartet covers played um, played with these instruments, two violins, a viola, and a cello. And what I'd like you to do is in the description below, click on one of those three, just one, you don't have to listen to all three, just pick one of them, and then analyze it. You know, either write it down or just do it in your head. What's the tempo? Largo, Andante, Allegro, Presto. What are their dynamics? Fortissimo, forte, mezzo forte, mezzo piano, piano, or pianissimo. Goes from loudest to quietest. Uh, what's the articulation? Is it smooth? Is it short and snappy? Or is it strong and accented? Legato, staccato, or mercato. What is the song title and composer? Now for the composer, you might, I mean, if you want to do extra research and find that out, you don't have to do that. What instruments are there? Hint, it's a string quartet. That should be the easiest question on here. And what is the impact? Do you like it? Do you think it's okay? Or do you not like it? And then if do you have any other comments? Um, I have gotten a few different people who have snapped photos of their analysis. They write it down, they snap a photo, and they send it to me. So I'll also put my email address down in the description also in case you'd like to do that as well. So, yeah, pick one of those three songs that are down in the description. Just, you know, think about what you're listening to as you're listening to it. And, uh, you know, I encourage you to look on your own to see if you can find more string quartet music because it's pretty, pretty awesome. I like it a lot. All right, we only have one thing left to do today, and that is do our train exit. So breathe with Middle Academy. Here we go. Thank you for making music with me today, and we'll see you next time with more music.